try again. Uh, let's revisit the common emitter amplifier, and uh, and we're going to see now how we can uh, modify the AC gain. So if we look at the amplifier as we just designed it with our uh, four resistor biasing network, uh, what we did before was calculate the gain, the input resistance, and the output resistance. We didn't really have much of a say or much of a design component into the gain of the circuit. Uh, we basically set up the DC biasing network and the gain came out to be equal to negative 10. And so that's, that's the gain. But normally when we are designing an amplifier, we would like to be able to set up the gain. Um, and so when we look at the expression for the gain, we can try to come up with ways that we could increase it, let's say to negative 50. Um, since the gain is uh, proportional to the ratio of RC to RE, we could say one way of increasing the gain would be increasing the numerator of that expression, so increasing RC. Another possible way um, would be decreasing the denominator, which will involve decreasing either little RE or um, big RE. The, if we modify little RE, it's typically much smaller than big RE, and so any changes to little RE are not going to, um, to yield a very visible result in the gain, but we could decrease the value of, uh, of the emitted resistor array, and that might uh, increase our gain. Now, what are the uh, problems with those approaches to increasing the gain, or rather the magnitude of the gain, the voltage gain? Uh, as we saw, we have one approach is increasing the numerator, RC. Now, RC, uh, we can see that it's approximately equal to the output resistance of the amplifier. For a voltage amplifier, uh, the ideal parameter values are a very large input resistance and a very small output resistance, ideally close to zero. The common emitter amplifier does not have uh, a great value of output resistance for a voltage amplifier already, so we have 20K, but if we keep increasing RC, that's going to increase our R out. So this implies that R out for the circuit will increase, and that's an undesirable effect. So let's look at the other alternative, which was increase or decrease, sorry. RE. And now remember that um, RE was there for a reason. <laughs> uh, when we decided the, the biasing network, we had seen how Having a resistor in the emitter to set the emitter voltage to around one volt uh, provides better beta stability for the circuit. Not only that, but we just saw how in the expression for the gain, the fact that RE is large and it swamps little RE gives us more temperature stability for the gain. Little RE is temperature dependent, but if um, RE is much larger than little RE, then we can assume that the gain is uh, is not as dependent on temperature or nearly independent of temperature. And so decreasing RE will affect both the beta and the temperature stability for the circuit. So um, reduces beta and temperature stability. Now there is a third alternative. There is a, a slight trick um, that's going to allow us to reduce the value of, um, of RE, or actually reduce the effective value of RE only for AC signals, while keeping uh, the DC value of RE, or the, the Q point, stable. How do we do that? Well, that's by introducing an emitter bypass capacitor. So that's our little trick here. And let's see how that is done. First of all, I'm going to split my emitter resistor RE into a series combination of two resistors. So I can do this and substitute RE with two resistors, which I'm going to label RE1 and RE2. And as long as the series combination of those resistors is equal to 2 kilo ohms, I still have effectively the same circuit as before, so I haven't changed the circuit so far. Now I'm going to introduce a bypass capacitor, a 
cross RE2. I'm going to label it CE. And I'm going to call this my emitter bypass cap. Now, what this capacitor does is notice that for DC purposes, this capacitor will behave as an open circuit, which means for DC purposes, in the DC equivalent circuit, the overall emitter resistance is still the series combination of RE1 and RE2. But for AC signals, or in the AC equivalent circuit, CE is, behaves as a short circuit, and so that means that RE2 is bypassed, meaning for AC purposes, what an AC signal sees is that the, emit the resistance connected to the emitter is RE1, and then it sees a short to ground. So there's a short to ground in parallel with RE2, and the parallel combination of the two is just a short to ground. Um, and so what this does is um, it allows us to, you know, right here, allows to modify the gain of the circuit. I should say increase because, you know, you, you can decrease it using this approach. Uh, well, I'm going to say modify. That's to modify um, AV. without affecting the Q point, the bias point. And that's rather important. Um, so let's take a look at the calculation for, you know, how we will calculate these resistors RE1 and RE2 to achieve a value of gain that we will want. Let's say, for example, we want our, uh, our gain to go up to negative 50. Well, in this case now, we have that uh, our gain is equal to negative RC divided by little re plus RE1. Remember, this is the AC gain, so we're looking at the AC equivalent circuit. I can solve this expression and I get RE plus RE1 is equal to um, RC divided by 50. And RC is equal to 20K. So basically that gives me that the sum of RE, a little RE plus RE1 needs to be 400 ohms. Since little RE is equal to 50 ohms, that means that RE1 must be equal to 350 ohms, so that the sum of the two gives me 400. Uh, and now RE1 plus RE2 need to be equal to 2 kilo ohms, the original value of RE, and so RE2 must be equal to 2K minus 350, which is equal to 1.65 kilo ohms. So now I have assigned values to these two resistors. I have 350 ohms for RE1 and 1.65 kilo ohms for RE2. Let's look at how the, um, the parameters uh, have changed for the circuit. Uh, the new AC amplifier parameters. So I'll write them here. Uh, new AC amplifier parameters. We have our new gain being equal to negative RC divided by little re plus RE1, which is equal to um, 50, negative 50. Now, how does R in and R out, how, how have they changed, if they have at all? Um, R in, if you remember, was equal to, um, approximately equal to R2, but it was overall equal to um, R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with Beta times little re plus, in this case, is now Re1. So um, this will be 220k in parallel with 20k in parallel with 100 times 50 plus 350. So basically, 
400 times uh, 100 it will be 40k. So uh, this has um, gone down before it used to be uh, 220k in parallel with 20k in parallel with 200k, and now it's 220 in parallel with 20 in parallel with 40. So R2 is no longer, you know, uh, much, much smaller than the, the input resistance looking into the base. And so the actual input resistance has gone down. It's lower than the 20 kilo ohms that we had approximately before. Swelling has gone down. That's a trade-off. And R out, it's going to be RC in parallel with little R O. Nothing has changed in terms of R out because um, RE does not play a role into it. And so it's still approximately equal to RC or approximately equal to 20 kilo ohms. So this is our, our new amplifier parameters. For our circuit. Um, so something important to note before we uh, move on with other topics uh, is you know how the emitter resistor behaves. Again, let's, let's just uh, maybe write that on one side so we don't forget. I'm gonna write it over here and we have that little note for DC purposes. The overall emitted resistance RE is equal to the sum of the two resistors RE1 plus RE2. For AC purposes, the overall resistance RE is equal to little RE plus RE1. Okay, the overall emitted resistance. So that's something important to remember when we are doing our um, AC calculation. AC gain, input resistance, output resistance. Thank you.